What's up everyone, welcome back to another review. This time we're going to be taking a look at Urban Legends Final Cut, the sequel to the original Urban Legends movie. This movie is directed by John Ottman. Overall, I think Urban Legends Final Cut is a solid sequel. It's not as good as the original movie, but there are things that I like about it, but I also got some criticisms for it. So I'm going to give you my positives and my negatives. Positives. I think John Ottman did an adequate job behind a director's chair. John Ottman is a very talented film composer, and he's actually a really good film editor. And in this movie, he did all three of those jobs, and I thought he did it the best way they possibly can. This movie doesn't have any groundbreaking visuals, but it is competently made. From a production standpoint, the film looks fine, it looks good, it's well done, it's well made. John Ottman did a fine job behind a director's chair, he did a fine job with the score, and he did a good job with his editing. So, in terms of all, in terms of the production of this movie, those are the best things I can say about it. <clears throat> Another positive I like, I like some members of the cast. I think overall everyone did an adequate job with the acting department. This is a horror movie. You ain't gonna get no uh, Oscar winning performances, but at least you're gonna get performances that will, you know, keep you entertained for the hour and a half that you watch this thing. Uh, to me, my highlights are the Loretta Devine, who makes her return as the character of Reese from the first movie. I love Loretta Devine as Reese, and I love that Reese got more screen time in the sequel, and I like how she's the only remaining link from the first movie to this movie, and I like how her story gets more pro gets progressed more. And I like and I like her character, and I like the interaction she has with the new set of characters and victims. And again, I think I would have made Reese more or less. I would have made Reese the more the main character in this movie, and made everyone else more background players. But that's just me personally. I think Reese deserves to get more love because she's the best part of this movie. As I as as I thought she was one of the better parts of the of the last movie as well. So. This movie gets automatic thumbs up just because it brings back the character of Reese. And once again, Reese gets to have some more badass moments near the end of the movie, which I love completely. Uh, I like the, I like Hart Burschner, Burschner of this movie. who play, Hart Burschner played Ellis in Die Hard. He also plays the villain in this movie. Uh, from an acting standpoint, I thought he did a good job. His character is peppered throughout the movie here and there. And when we get to his motivations, I will put that in my negative side because I think his motivations are completely out of whack and just dumb when you look at it. And I think everyone else in this movie did a fine job as well. Uh, Jennifer Morrison, she plays Amy Mayfield, the lead heroine. She's okay. There's nothing all that interesting about her besides the fact that she's a film student and that her father was a documentarian. Other than that, she doesn't really have a personality of her own. She kind of gets lost in the shuffle when compared to Loretta, when she's paired up with Loretta Devon, you can clearly tell who's the better character. But from an acting standpoint, I thought she did. I thought she did okay. Um, you have all the supporting cast members who have whose names I can't remember because they're just faceless. You know, ten little Indians, pick them off one by one type deal. But they're okay too. But my two standouts are the characters of Dirk and Stan, played by Anthony Anderson and Michael Bacall. I think those two are hilarious. They have great comedic timing. And Dirk and Stan are pretty much me and one of my close friends. Me and my, one of my buddies were big, big movie guys. And if we were to ever be like, you know, on a film set doing makeup effects or just anything involved with movies behind the camera, Dirk and Stan would be us. Their personalities match us almost to a T. So I find myself relating more to Dirk and Stan, mainly because th that's my personality and that's how I would act on a film scene. So Anthony Anderson and Michael McCall, like Loretta Devine, Thumbs up in my book. Those are my three favorite characters in this entire movie. Uh, I thought some of the kills in this movie are well done. I like the kidney heist kill. I like when one of the characters gets killed on a film set but ends, and the killer makes it look like a snuff film. I thought that was pretty cool. I like the homage to Black Christmas when he kills his first victim. So this movie's got a lot of cool things in it from a vi from a, from homage standpoint and from just its own little uh, and for trying to stand out on its own and the whole aesthetic of this thing taking place at a film school i also thought was cool i don't think Ottman did enough with it and um, that's where i'm going to go into my negatives the whole concept of this movie being on a film school and having a meta vibe about emmy mayfield wanting to make movies about urban legends i don't think the movie fully realized that kind of potential Especially since this movie is very Hitchcock heavy in terms of his references. Very disappointed that Ottman didn't go for a more Hitchcock-like feel with this movie, with its visuals and with its story. I think it's very, very slop I think it's very, very sloppily done and very, very flimsy when it comes to that. And it's just throwing in those references for the sake of throwing in those references, which to me is a letdown. Because I think if this movie would have had a more Hitchcock, would have really grabbed onto that more Hitchcockian feel. 
this could have been a really good horror movie from a visual standpoint, from a story standpoint, but it didn't really realize that potential. And that's, a, and that's something that I don't like, that this movie had potential to be very Hitchcock inspired in terms of its visuals and story and didn't even touch that at all. And when you get to the killer's motivations and why he's doing what he's doing, it's stupid. Basically, Harp Barshner's character used to be a film student at this school and he kind of lost his bid to get this, you know, Hitchcock award because Amy Mayfield's father, Taylor Mayfield, cast a deciding vote against him. So right off the bat, his connection to Amy is extremely loose. Very, very, very loose. It's almost via by coincidence in a way. And when you get his motivation as to why he's doing the killing, so pretty much one of his students called Travis Stark made a really, really good film. Film, amateur film. And the teacher, Professor Solomon, wanted to take that film and pass it off as his own. So to do that, he pretty much kills every single person that was connected to that film so that there would be no witnesses when he would go to hand it in, hand it in, hand it in as his own. So right off the bat, his motivations are sloppy. His connection to the main heroine is just by pure coincidence. And it's kind of dumb when you look back at it. It was dumb when I saw it when I was 10, and it's dumb when I see it now. Now, I know horror movies, they're not meant to have like these grandiose things, but when you look at Scream and how the motivations for the killers were revealed, that is logical and it makes sense. The motivation for, the, for Brenda, the killer in the first movie, logical and it made sense. The killer in this movie, his motivations, illogical and they don't make sense and I don't really like it and it's kind of, and it's, and it's stupid at the end of the day. But I do like the ending of this movie where once Professor Solomon goes to prison and we see Brenda in a nice little cameo that kind of gets the wheels turning in your head. Oh, maybe Urban Legends 3 will have these two team up and they get revenge on the people who defeated them in their, in their, in their, previous, in their respective movies. That could have been a cool coming together, right? Right? Hold on. Once they give my final grade for a final cut, I will briefly talk about Urban Legends 3. So yes, Urban Legends Final Cut overall, I like this movie. It has good elements to it. It has a lot of flaws to it. But overall, it's a very enjoyable movie. You can watch it and not be bored, which is why I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. It's not as good as the first movie, but it has some things in it that will keep you entertained. And it's not a horrible movie by any stretch of the imagination. It is competently made, and it does have entertainment value to it. And that's the best I can say about Urban Legends Final Cut. 6.5 out of 10. Now, let's talk about Urban Legends 3 Bloody Mary. So you know how I said that Brenda and at the, at the end of Final Cut teased a potential team up between Brenda and Professor Solomon? That does not happen at all in Urban Legends Bloody Mary. As a matter of fact, Urban Legends Bloody Mary is takes the supernatural route and it's a complete fucking shit show. It is a garbage movie. I hate Urban Legends Bloody Mary. The first two Urban Legends movie take place in a somewhat grounded reality. Urban, once you add that supernatural hook to movies that are grounded in reality, it renders the movies that came before it completely irrelevant and useless. And Urban Legends Bloody Mary renders the first two movies completely utterly and useless. I refuse to acknowledge that movie, that movie's existence. That's how garbage it is. Mary Lambert, a very talented director, her talents are wasted in Urban Legends Bloody Mary. The potential that you could have had with Brenda and Professor Solomon teaming up to take on the survivors of their previous movies was a complete and utter missed opportunity to have an Avengers-like feel by having all the victims come together to take down these two killers who are coming after them collectively. That could have been a very fun movie. Instead, this once you take that supernatural route, the story is trash. Everything is trash. It makes very passing references to the to the first two movies. That Bloody Mary has the balls to say it's connected to those two movies, and it doesn't even deserve to be mentioned in the same breath. Urban Legends Bloody Mary gets a zero out of ten for me. So yes, those are my thoughts on both Urban Legends two and three. Let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Do you like them? Do you hate them? I would like to know. Like this video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.